you get any closer, you'll end up with a boiled nose. Smells good. Tastes good, too. Smells great. <laughs> That's an opinion also shared by Timmy and Lassie. They're done, aren't they? Uh, not quite. The sauce is just about finished, but the spare ribs aren't. I like mine really crisp. Sure don't look like enough to feed over 20 people. You mean over 30. This is the biggest Grange dinner of the year. Oh, there'll be plenty. At least four other wives are bringing spare ribs, and then there'll be salad and baked beans, too. And there's nothing better than barbecued ribs and beans on a cold winter's day. <laughs> Well, we better get going, Paul. We gotta pick up those folding chairs. Yeah, and I promised to pick up some tables, too, from the Tysons. Mm. Mm. Uh huh. <laughs> That'll teach you. Listen, why don't you go on ahead? It's an 18 mile drive to Auburn. I don't want you to be late. I'll come on just as soon as the spare ribs are done. All right, we'll take the pickup. Mom, may I go with Dad and Uncle Petrie? Why, sure, son. No reason why you can't. I'll get my coat. Oh, and your sweater under it, too. And don't forget to wear your overshoes. Keep your feet warm. Did you put gas in the car? Filled her up yesterday. Also check the oil and the tires and the water and the battery. All you need is your driver's license. <laughs> and the barbecued spare ribs. I told Lassie I was going to leave her with you, Mom, so you'll have some company. Now you take good care of Mom, and don't let her spill the sauce. <laughs> Those are good instructions if I ever heard any. Don't be too long. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, dear. I'll see you in a little while. Okay. Lassie? What is it, Lassie? Oh, it's all right. Down, girl. Get on. There you go. Mrs. Martin? Yes? My name's Bob Miner. I'm a state trapper. Is Mr. Martin home? No, he's not. Um, may I help you? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, well, I... Well, here, why don't you come on in where it's warm? This is certainly no weather to be standing on doorsteps. Thank you. It's about the coldest day we've had this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to leave this map for Mr. Martin. I don't want to frighten you, ma'am, but there's a cougar prowling around this area. I've set a series of four traps at each of these spots. Oh. Well, I'm afraid that maps always confuse me, but... Well, anyway, I'll give it to my husband. You say it's a cougar? Yes, there was a bad forest fire on the other side of the ridge. Cougar, fox, deer, the ones that escaped the burning have migrated to this side. But still, the ridge is a long way from here. Oh, I know that. But a hungry cougar will travel a long way to get himself a nice fat chicken. Well, how close do you think he is? Well, I wish I knew. May not be within miles, but if he's around, I'll get him. Sounds frightening. What, um, what could we do? Just be careful. Now, these are good, strong traps. They're anchored to a log buried several feet. They'll hold a horse. Well, they look awful. <laughs> they look worse than they are. Matter of fact, the spring on these has been weakened, so the animal isn't hurt. He's just held. Now, they open with this C-clamp, and it goes on just as I have it here. You wind down the screw until the spring opens. I'm going to leave this with you, so if any of your livestock gets caught, your husband can free it. And like I said, the traps won't hurt it. Oh, if it were my dog, I'd keep it in the house till we catch that cougar. Oh, well, we certainly will. Of course, he might head back for the mountains and not cause any trouble at all. Oh, I hope so. Anyway, thanks for the warning and for the map. Yeah, I make the rounds of my traps every day. If we get him, I'll let you know. Oh, well, wish you good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. I really am late, Lassie.
Bueno. Thank you, Lassie. <laughs> I'm going to leave you at home, Lassie. You won't mind missing the Grange meeting, will you? Meetings are usually very dull for doggies anyway. You'll be much safer at home. You know, cougars can be very nasty animals. Bye, Lassie. We won't be very late. feel better. Bye. Take care of things now. to cook. Well, that's your mom's special secret recipe. Even I don't know. But they're worth waiting for, aren't they, Dad? You bet they are. Listen, you go in and tell Mrs. Bates to hold up for a few minutes, and then Mom will be along and we can all sit down together. 
Okay. Martin. Stop acting like an idiot. Hysterics isn't going to get you anywhere. What you need is a calm, sensible look at the situation. Now, you're caught in a trap. You may have an injured ankle. You're in a very lonely spot where there's certainly very little traffic. You may just freeze before anybody finds you. Everybody knows there isn't a cougar in the neighborhood. Hasn't been one for years. Even if there was, cougars don't attack people. They're cowards. Everybody knows that. Where do you suppose your mother could be? Maybe she got lost. Between here and home? No, it ain't likely. Jenny, this is Paul Martin. Ring my home, would you please? Thanks. Maybe somebody stole the food. Well, now that's a possibility. Your mother's spare ribs would tempt almost anybody. <laughs> well, I guess she's left, Jenny. Thanks, anyway. Well, she's on her way. Let's go tell Mrs. Bates. Be careful. Oh, good girl. Well, watch out, there are more of them.
please be careful. What am I going to do? <laughs> it's no use, Lassie. It's buried too deep. Come here, girl. Lassie, do you remember the, the sea clamp that the trapper brought? <laughs> well, I think I left it on the sink. Would you go get it for me? Everybody's eating, Dad. Yeah, I know. Why don't you start eating, too? I want to wait for you and Mom. Besides, I ate a hot dog. Where can she be? Maybe she stopped off someplace. Yes, but where? And why? You know, Mom, always trying to help somebody. You know, you're right. You know, I'll bet at this very moment she's safe and sound in some house doing something for someone. Besides, Lassie's taking care of her. Of course she is. It's a good try, but that's my cheese slicer. Lassie, look. The sea clamp. Th the one you picked up off the floor, remember? <laughs> well, go, go get it. C try. That's a girl. Hurry, Lassie! Go on in and eat, Timmy. I'm going to go look for your mother. I'll go with you. No, you stay here with Uncle Petrie and enjoy your dinner. I wouldn't be able to eat a bite, not even the ice cream. Please let me go with you. Boy's right, Paul. We'll all go. We haven't met her yet. That's only an old logging road that cuts across. But she'd have more sense than to take that route. Maybe she's still at home. 
Oh, if she were, she would have answered the phone. Right here. It's all right. Oh, he's dead. That's the first cougar around these parts in years. I know. You see, I took the shortcut because I was so late. And then I got a flat tire. So then I had to get the tire out of the trunk, and as soon as I did, it got away from me, so I had to chase it. And then I got my foot caught in the trap, see? But Lassie got me out. Well, we better get you to Doc Stewart. Oh, well, no, really, I'm all right. It doesn't hurt. I'm just kind of shaken up, and well, I'm very cold. Well, we'll just take you home and get some hot soup in you. <laughs> oh, my spare ribs. I did the finished eating back at the Grange. Good. Oh, they're cold. Well, like I always say, there's nothing better than a crisp, cold spare rib. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. Well, have one on me. Oh, well, Lassie, would you like one too? You certainly deserve it. There, be my honored guest. <laughs> There you are. Well, just as you always say, there is nothing like a cold, crisp spare rib. Wait till Boomer hears that you save Mom from that old cougar. I'd better work up in the North Meadow today. Fine. That'll give us a good start. Wait a minute. I've got a shopping list for you. Hmm. Lipstick, shampoo, face powder. Are you dolling up for anybody I know? Mm, could be. When will you be home? Well, it depends on how long it takes to get the garden harrow fixed. <laughs> Hi. Well, what's 
the big project. Well, don't you remember? Uh, Timmy and Boomer are going to build a lean-to today. Lean-to? Out of those old boards you said we could have. Oh, yes, yes, the old boards. Well, where are they? In the woods. We've already gotten the ridge pole in place. Well, that's fine, Timmy, but, uh, well, let's not run off with the whole tool chest. To begin with, I thought we agreed no saws. It's just a little one. Big enough to cut off a finger. Those boards are all cut in short pieces. You can use them as they are. Those are nails. Fine. Just watch your fingers when you're hammering. Two screwdrivers. Won't one be enough? Especially since you're using nails. I guess so. That's what holding the nails while we hammer. And, uh, this? That's for playing ball. We were finished building the lean-to. Oh. oh. Well, uh, put these away, son. You'll be in business. Okay, Dad. Timmy. Dad's going into Capital City. Now is your last chance if you want to ask him any questions about the lean-to. I know how to build it. I looked it up in Boomer's handicraft book. Looked it up, huh? Well, that's the way to do things. <laughs> Bye, Ruth. Be home later. your friend? She's not my friend. She's my cousin. Well, you can still introduce me. I'm Millicent Radcliffe from Capital City. I'm visiting my little country cousin for the day. Little? Well, I'm very happy to meet you, Millicent. I'm Mrs. Martin, and that's Timmy, and this is Lassie. Oh, Lassie. Oh, Lassie. You're simply gorgeous. Oh, I love the country. It's fascinating. We're stuck with her for the day. Boomer. Well, we don't have time to play with girls. We're building things. Now, I'm sure that Millicent can be very helpful. Oh, you're so pretty. Yes, you are. <laughs> Look at this. A drill. We can make peep holes. Peep holes nothing. That's to drill holes for the rawhide thongs. Rawhide thongs? Sure, to tie the boards to the ridge pole. We're gonna build it Indian style, aren't we? We are not. You need real logs for Indian style. And besides, I got hammer and nails. But it's my handicraft book, and I say we do it Indian style. It's my wood, and I say we nail it. Now, boys. But you agree to share it 50-50. That doesn't mean you're gonna do the whole thing. Timmy. I'm not trying to. Yes, you are. Boys, for heaven's sake. But he said I only meant... Look, if you expect to accomplish anything, you're just going to have to work out some sort of a compromise. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How do you make a compromise? Compromise. Well, that means you uh, meet each other halfway. Oh. You run along now. Go ahead. I'll bring some refreshments to you in a little while. Thank you, Mrs. Okay. Martin. Boys are such children. Are those the boys? What's wrong with them? Why, they're dirty. I'm not going to play with them. We're not playing, Millicent. We're building something. Indian style. No. It's more fun to hammer with nails. It's more fun to drill holes. I told you you could drill peep holes. Who ever heard of peep holes in a lean-to? What's wrong with them? It'll rain in, that's what. Boomer, Mrs. Martin said for you to compromise. Now, how are we going to do that? Build half the lean-to your way, half Boomer's way. 
Are all girls that stupid? Except Lassie and Mom. They don't count. Lassie's a dog and your mom is a mom. Well, you suit yourselves. I'm going for a walk. You better not. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my boss. You'll get lost. Me get lost? Really, Boomer. Just last week, I went to my music lesson on the bus all by myself. And I got change of 50 cents. In Capital City? Of course. Gosh. There's a big difference between Capital City and this woods. He's right. Millicent, you come back here. I'm supposed to watch her. I know. Go after her, girl, and don't let her get far away. Go on. Lassie will watch her. Hi, Lassie. Are you coming along with me? Good. Let's see if we can find some pretty flowers to make a hat. Oh, Lassie. Thank you. Here, I'll make you look real pretty. Okay, now. Yeah. Poor Lassie. Look what Millicent's doing to her. Lassie likes it. Yeah, let's get busy. What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? Boomer, Indian style is no good. The one hold the boards together, and this lean-to's got to be watertight. Indian style was good enough for the Indians. I always let you have your way. Oh, yeah? When? Yesterday. I wanted to play football, but you wanted to play marbles. So what? So we played marbles. Saturday, I wanted to go bike riding, but you wanted to pick berries. And last Tuesday... Okay, okay. Here, hold it. Show off. Hey, you're hurting me. Hey, Lassie! Lassie, let go! I'm not one of your bones. No, you're a sack of potatoes. Sack of potatoes? <laughs> 
didn't have to save me, girl. We were only playing. Come on, Timmy, let me have a turn. Wait until I nail the board up. You can do what you want. I'm gonna build my own lean to Indian stuff. I'll show you which way's better. Go ahead. I'll bet you I'll be done before you even get one board nailed up. I bet you I'll be finished before you even get one hole drilled. Oh, yeah?
Gee. Don't move, Millicent. I won't. But get me out. Please. What'd you come in here for anyhow? I was just exploring. We're not allowed in this cave. It's dangerous. How did I know? Let's try again. No, I'll fall. Lassie, go home for help. Go home for help. Please don't let go. We won't. Boy, I hope Lassie finds somebody. project was a big success.
would have been killed. That hole must be a mile deep. Maybe even two miles. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Boomer, how can I ever thank you? Don't forget, Timmy helped. And so did Lassie. It was her idea to get the rope. Yeah, I could have never done it alone. That was real teamwork. It sure was. Good girl, Lassie. Oh, Lassie, I love you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You're back early. Oh, I didn't want to keep you waiting. Here you are, lipstick, shampoo, and face powder. Now you can be beautiful. Yep. Where's Timmy? Oh, he and the uh, Boomer are out in the woods. I was just going to go get them. Well, let's go. I want to see how that lean-to is progressing. <laughs> Don't you expect any miracles. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. How do you like it? Swell. Well, I can't believe it. Well, just a minute. Where's Millicent? Here I am. I'm drilling the peephole. <laughs> That's what I call teamwork. That's right, Dad. Lassie showed us how it works. That's all right, Timmy. I'll finish the ice cream, and you can put the sign out now if you like. OK. Thanks, Lassie. Upstairs. Company? Mm -hmm. Hi, Timmy. Hi, Boomer. Aren't you going to play ball? You know I can't. Robin's coming. Oh, I forgot. That English kid. What's she doing? Fixing a bed for Robin's dog. What kind of a dog? Dad said they had a whole kennel of Great Danes. Great Danes? They're big. They sure are. Lassie, put it back where it belongs. Please. Think Robin will try out for the team? Dad said English people play cricket instead of baseball. Cricket? What kind of game's that? I don't know. Think they hide in bushes and chirp at each other? That's what crickets do. Dad stayed with his folks when he was stationed in England. So he's coming here for a visit. How would you like to lick the beater? I'll say. <laughs> OK. Oh, here they are. You can finish it, Boomer. Come on. I'll get his other things and take them on out. Come on, Robin. Meet the rest of the family. Oh, hello, Robin. Howdy, Mrs. Martin. Well, we're awfully glad you're going to be with us. That's mighty white of you, Mom. Timmy, meet Robin. Hi, Robin. What's cooking, old chap? We're going to be the best of pals, and I'm not just whistling Dixie. Um, oh, uh, Boomer, why, why don't you introduce Boomer? Come on. Boomer, I mean Ralph. This is Robin. Hi. Put her there, Boomer. <laughs> 
Mommy wants to be friends, too. My word, she's a beauty. Hasn't anyone let that poor dog out of its crate yet? Excuse me, girl. in a minute. Relax, old boy. Relax. He's making you welcome. I'll bet Robin would like to see his room, Timmy. Come on, Robin. Hands across the sea. Wash up to me. Dinner in five minutes. I'll leave the basin nice and clean. Well, not much like London, is it, Robin? It is rather different, sir. I hope you know how very much we want you to have a good time here. Come to think of it, your mother said those very words to me. Really, sir? I mean, no kidding? I was, uh, I was so American and trying to be so British and... They were so British and trying to be so American. It must have been deucedly uncomfortable. It was, until we just got around to being ourselves. Uh, would you mind saying grace tonight, Robin? I think it'd be nice if you did. We thank thee, Father, for this day. Help us tomorrow to do thy will. Breathe thy blessings on every heart in this household and for what we are about to receive, our deepest thanks. Thank you, Robin. I can't make up my mind which is most delicious, or if it's a combined taste that make dinner so wonderful. Just wait till she whips up her Virginia baked ham with candied yams. Oh, if they're half as good as this. Are you ready for seconds, Uncle Petrie? Uh, I'm afraid I'll have to leave seconds to the younger generation. <laughs> Would you mind not smoking just yet, Uncle Petrie? This one's for Mrs. Martin. Mom wanted you to have this. Oh, thank you very much. This one's for Mr. Martin. Thank you, Robin. Here's Uncle Petrie's. Well, now, thank you, boy. And Timmy. Thanks. Well, what do you know? Uh, reckon there's nothing to stop me from smoking now. Say. These are just great. Best pipe I ever owned. My goodness, what beautiful embroidery. And I'll bet Granny did them. Indeed she did. Oh, why, it's lovely. We must all write thank you notes right away. Look what I got. I'm looking. Those are my school colors, Timmy. We're very proud of our colors at home. I'm proud of them too, Robin. Thanks. Thanks. 
Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hiya, Boomer. Waiting for Timmy? Nah, he's walking up ahead. Hey, what is that? A girl? Well, not exactly. Come on, let's dive bomb them. Sure. It's Boomer. We always go to school together. You and Lassie actually speak to each other, don't you? <laughs> Which came first, cricket or baseball? Oh, we were playing cricket before America was a colony. Do you think I could learn it? I'd be happy to teach you. Mom! Mom! We fed your brooders. And Lassie wouldn't permit Basil to frighten them. Oh? I thought you'd be with the other boys, having fun. We are not enough fun alone. Tomorrow I'm going to teach Timmy how to play cricket. Oh, well, would you like some fresh milk and chocolate cookies? I was rather wishing for tea. I'm not old enough for tea. Neither am I, but at home this is tea time. Well, here we call it snack time. I like that expression, snack time. <laughs> I like tea time better. It makes me feel grown up. Oh, come on. We'll wash up first, Molly. Well, shall I pour some milk for Boomer? No, I don't think so. What do you call that old thing hanging around your neck? It's a scarf. Like my cap, it's woven in my school colors. Wearing them is evidence of one's loyalty to a school. Yes? I think we ought to have school colors, too. Yeah, black and blue. <laughs> Will you please be quiet? Are there any more questions? The chap in the third row. Why do you wear those skinny little short pants? <laughs> Perhaps to remind us that we are still children. Perhaps because exposure to the elements hardens one. Or perhaps we respect our fathers who also wore skinny little short pants. The young lady in the second row. My name is Wilhelmina. Don't forget to give your address. I won't, if you'll come and see me. So there. I wanted to know if you flew to America, or did you sail? I bet you swam. That's more than any of you fellas could do. Before recess starts, I think we ought to thank Robin for his most interesting talk. <laughs> Ralph, will you and Bud come to the desk? The rest of the class may be excused. Timmy, I'll give you a piece of my candy if you'll introduce me. Licorice? Okay. I don't know what brought on this outburst of rudeness. Has Robin done something I should know about? Well, the three of us will talk it all out after school today. And tomorrow, too, if your manners do not improve immediately. All right. God bless Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie, and Lassie, and God bless everybody. Amen. Excuse me for forgetting, and God bless Robin, too. And get Boomer and Bud to like him, because Robin's my friend, too. No, Dad. How, uh, how'd you get on with Robin today? Well, um, we got along fine. Man to man. 
Do you think he'd rather go out with Uncle Petrie and me tomorrow or go to school with you? I know I'd like to be with you. And Robin? I'm kind of mixed up. Well, that happens to most of us one time or another. Even grown-ups? Especially grown-ups. Sometimes talking helps. Well, Boomer and Robin are both swell kids. Of course they are. But they're different in a way. They talk different. They dress different. Yes. But does that matter so much? The kids were uh, making fun of Robin today, is that it? You're not mixed up, Timmy. Well, someone is. Once Boomer and the others understand Robin, they'll learn something you found out by yourself. I hope so. What did I find out, Dad? Oh, that it's not wrong or bad to be different. If you meet somebody halfway and get to know each other, you can learn a lot from each other. Oh. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. down the pedal and lock it right there. There you are. Bet you'll be running this thing for noon. Oh, that would be smashing. You smash it and I'll tan your hide. He means that would be swell. Oh? Then why didn't he say so? He did, in English. See you after school. Right, Al. Don't forget the cricket stuff. Hi, Sean. Here, Basil. Like to try it again? Hop up. Release that gear first. After school. It's not my fault. Our Robin's. If you take his side, you're his friend, not mine. Can't a fella have two friends? You playing ball this afternoon? Maybe after my cricket lesson. Come on, Lassie. Now you tell me what the bowler does. He tries to knock the sticks off the wicket. And the batsman must protect the wicket by hitting your bowl. If he succeeds, he has to reach the other wicket safely. Just like baseball. Except that I must get there before the fielder can knock the sticks off the wicket. Pretty complicated. No, it isn't. Just have a go at it. You'll see. Well played, old chap. Throw it in, bud. Give me the ball. Try and get it. You're behaving shamefully. Kindly give me that ball. Sure. Ought to put your energies to better use, chum. Don't chum me. Come on, Robin. Let's go back to the house. We came here to play cricket. I won't let these bullies spoil our fun. Oh, you think you can stop us? It's about time somebody tried. Well, go ahead. Try. If you want it that way. Yeah, I want it that way. Hey, that wasn't fair.
you, Jimmy. feeding them for me? Sure, Ruth. Now get out of here. Go on back there. Go on. Get. Get. Go on. Basil? Come here, Basil. Come on. There you are now. Come on. You're a fine little doggy. <laughs> Don't you let anybody tell you you're not. What's he good for anyway? Always getting underfoot and scaring the brooders. Don't pay any attention to Uncle Petrie. His bark is worse than his bite. Just how you feel, Robin. Wouldn't you like to talk about it? I've made Timmy lose all his friends. Well, now, that's quite a trick. How did you manage it? By being myself, I guess. They don't like me, and they don't like Timmy because he does. Well, never having been a boy, I... I'm afraid this whole thing confuses me a little bit. Even Basil can't get off on the proper foot. We've caused so much trouble. I think we'd do best to fly on to Toronto. Oh, well, now, none of us here would like that at all. I won't get any pleasure out of it either. Well, if you did leave, don't you think that would be a little bit like running away? They know I'm not a coward. Boomer? I think it was Bud. Must have been a real Donnybrook. Oh, it was all right. A real Donnybrook. Well, I think you'll feel better after you've had a bath. I don't know. In any case, I think you owe it to Timmy to talk the whole thing out before you do anything drastic. First of all, though, you have a bath and a rest. Your peaches, Mrs. Martin. Kids like Robin now. They want to be pals. <laughs> Robin, wait until you hear. Mom, Dad! He's pinned up there on the welcome sign. He's gone to the airport. Gee, just when the fellows got to like you. They even wanted to learn how to play cricket. And he thought he was being a nuisance. We ought to go after him. Now, come on. Well, if he cut across the fields, he'd pass pretty close to here. Oh, dear, if anything has happened to him. Come on, Timmy. We'll take Lassie and scout around. There's a wagon path further over. Pick us up there. We've got to find Basil, Lassie. He ran away with Robin. <laughs> Come on, Timmy.
because of you, Timmy. It was because of what I was doing to you. Making you lose all your pals. I've got something to tell you. And I think you'll like it. Come on home, Robert. <laughs> Timmy, you're not just a whistling Dixie chum. Now, why can't they do this between innings and baseball? I don't know, but I sure wish they would. <laughs> 